An out of control inferno on board your plane is just about the worst case scenario for any flyer. On an overnight flight between New York and Geneva in 1998, a fire breaks out on board flight Swissair 111. The fire eats its way through the plane's electronic systems, leaving the crew without instruments. This large plane carrying 229 people plunges into the ocean just off the coast of Nova Scotia, killing everyone on board. The McDonnell Douglas MD-11 was an improved version of their popular DC-10 from the 1970s. The MD-11s first flew in the early 90s and immediately became the flagship of Swiss Air, Switzerland's national flag carrier. There were many improvements made to the MD-11 over the DC-10. The adoption of a glass cockpit replacing the steam and analog gauges, the computerized cockpit eliminated the flight engineer role, dropping the necessary flight crew down to two from three. Other improvements were made to the airframe, the fuselage was stretched, and the distinctive tail structure was also reworked. Like the DC-10, the MD-11 was a wide-body trijet, meaning the third engine was mounted in the tail fin. The redesigned tail structure brought its own complications, which may warrant its own video in the future. McDonnell Douglas had even developed the plane's manual flight controls to feel similar to that of the DC-10, so pilots could more easily jump to the new plane. Technology was improving and airlines wanted more from their planes, and also wanting to give their potential customers more reasons to fly with them. Around this time, personal in-flight entertainment was beginning to take hold on modern planes. In the old days, passengers often shared a screen and had no choice in the kind of entertainment on board. This was changing, and Swiss Air wanted to push a new selling point and jumped at the opportunity to try out this new in-flight entertainment on board their brand new MD-11s. On this device, passengers in first class could choose from a selection of films, TV shows, and games to play for the first time. This in-flight entertainment system was partially blamed for the downing of Flight 111, not for the technology itself, but for how it was installed on this particular plane. Out of sight, above the passenger cabin on the MD-11, is a space containing a lot of electrical wiring and insulation that runs the full length of the plane with a bulkhead at the front galley that separates the space between the cabin fuselage and the nose section, with a small opening to allow for the wiring to pass through. In this attic space, there is also a great deal of insulation within the plane's skin, which is wrapped in a metallic polyester film made of polyethylene terephthalate. All materials like this have to pass a safety check before being allowed to fly. Of course, this depends on the registered plane's country's regulations, Despite getting the FAA's seal of approval, this material that wrapped the insulation on the MD-11 was actually highly flammable. On this exact Swiss Air plane registered Hotel Bravo India Whiskey Foxtrot, the electrical wiring relating to the in-flight entertainment system along with other systems was installed with very little slack as it was mounted to a bracket. Aircraft constantly shake and vibrate during flight, not to mention that planes can also bump either in turbulence or on landing. This meant that these wires were chafing the bracket that they were connected to, eroding the insulation and exposing the live wire inside. This is what happened on this Swiss Air plane, and we will come back to what happened next later. September 2nd, 1998. Hotel Bravo India Whiskey Foxtrot flying as Swiss Air 111 will be flying between New York JFK and Geneva, Switzerland on an overnight flight. 219 passengers embark the plane with a further 14 members of the crew interesting to note that this plane was also carrying some precious cargo in the form of two original paintings by Pablo Picasso. Swiss Air in 1998 was regarded as one of the world's best airlines with some of the most highly experienced flight crews. The captain and pilot in command is Ur Zimmermann. At 50 years of age with over 10,000 flight hours, he also spends his time training other pilots for Swiss Air. First Officer Stefan Lowe is 36 and just shy of 5,000 flight hours. He was in the Swiss Air Force before landing a job as an airline pilot. At just before 20 past 8 in the evening, Swiss Air Flight 111 leaves New York heading northeast along the coast of North America. Strangely, there was a radio blackout from the plane just after takeoff due to a communication and tuning error for the first 10 to 15 minutes of the flight. For the first 50 minutes, everything is normal on board as the passengers and crew settle in for the long flight ahead. 
Out of sight behind the panel walls of the cockpit, it is believed that eight of the wires belong to the personal in-flight entertainment, along with about a dozen of other wires related to other systems, arced. To put it simply, an electrical arc is an event where there is a discharge of energy from the electrical current. It can produce a moment of extreme heat, enough heat that it can also melt the wiring that it came from. This arcing event ignites the flammable metallic film coating the insulation and slowly begins to burn, becoming a fuel for a fire. At 10 past 10 in the evening, local Atlantic time, the crew notice an odor in the air. The person on board is summoned to the flight deck for further confirmation of a strange smell in the cockpit. The flight attendant tells the pilots that they can't smell the odor in the cabin. The crew suspect that there is some kind of problem with the plane's air conditioning. For a short while, a light smoke begins to appear in the cockpit, but just as it does appear, it goes away. Not taking any chances, the crew prepare to land the plane at the nearest suitable airport, first suggesting Boston, as it's an airport that both pilots are familiar with, with a Swiss Air presence at the airport as well. They radio Moncton Center, which controls a lot of oceanic traffic on the west side of the Atlantic. They radio in with a pan-pan call. In the world of nautical radio telephony, pan is an urgency message but not a distress call, or not an emergency as of yet. Swiss Air 111 Heavy is declaring pan, 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 we have a smoke in the cockpit, uh, request immediate, immediate return, uh, to a convenient place, I guess, uh, Boston also. At their current position, Boston is over 400 kilometers away and in the opposite direction to where they are flying. The controller working that night suggests the much closer airport at Halifax, only 120 kilometers away. Captain Zimmerman chooses Halifax, but they are currently too high to make it into the airport on a straight in approach. Not only are they too high, but they are also not in an ideal way for a safe landing, and so the crew requests to dump some fuel. ATC vectored the plane south of Nova Scotia over the Atlantic to start the fuel dump. Swiss Air 111 Center. Swiss Air 111, go ahead. Uh, would you prefer to go into Halifax? Affirmative, Swiss Air 111, we prefer uh, Halifax from our position. As the plane descends for the airport at Halifax, the crew begin a checklist in the Swiss Air operating manual titled Smoke of Unknown Origin. Part of the steps in this checklist include turning off all non-essential electronics in the cabin, including all in-flight entertainment and cabin lighting. Non-essential electricals also include the recirculating fans in the cabin ceiling. Currently, these fans are keeping the fire from spreading to the cockpit by blowing the smoke and flames away from the nose of the plane. However, the crew didn't know where the fire was, and following the procedures detailed in their checklists, the captain and first officer did everything by the book. With turning off the recirculating fans in the cabin ceiling, the fire then changes direction and heads for the cockpit. Shortly thereafter, once the fire had made its way to the flight deck, the crew radioed in a distress call or a mayday, citing that they must land immediately and the pilots began making for the runway. At 10.25pm, the fire on board starts to eat its way through the plane's essential electronics, disabling the autopilot. A few seconds later, Captain Zimmerman relays the plane's last communication with the ground. Swiss Air 111, just a couple of miles. I'll be right with you. Roger. And we are declaring emergency now, Swiss Air 111. Copy that. As the fire was largely contained out of sight in the ceiling of the cabin and in the cockpit, the passengers on board were likely oblivious to what was going on in the cockpit. One minute later, the plane's flight data and cockpit voice recorders go dead, but the plane continues to still fly. We will never know for sure exactly what happened in the minutes that followed, but as ATC tracked the plane from the ground, they noticed that the plane then starts to turn away from the airport again, heading west. Those that investigated the accident believe that Captain Zimmerman left his seat to try and fight the fire, leaving First Officer Lowe to fly the plane as his primary flight and navigation instruments begin to fail. He has no idea which direction he is flying in, but also whether the plane is climbing or descending, in the dark night with no horizon and smoke in the cockpit, this MD-11 is unflyable. For over four minutes, Swiss Air 111 was flying blind and at 10.31 p.m. crashes into the Atlantic Ocean in a nose-down position. Traveling at over 500 kilometers per hour, the plane shatters on impact. The MD-11 is obliterated instantly.
After the crash, a salvage effort recovered over 2 million pieces of the plane from the seabed. Out of all the 229 people on board, just one body is found intact. This is the deadliest incident involving this plane, accounting for well over 90% of all deaths involving an MD-11. It is also the deadliest aviation incident involving a fire on board. The tragedy of Swiss Air Flight 111 was a fatal blow to Swiss Air as they ceased operations just a few years later in 2001 to be taken over by a new Swiss airline that operates today. The last MD-11 flew passengers in 2014 and the type remains a reliable member of the fleet for freight operators to this day.